Take one top New York restaurant. Add a celebrity chef. I can't give you any blessings, unfortunately. Then throw in two high school rookies. They're ragging on my dirt. Is it a recipe for disaster? He's a dead man. Or food that can fool the critics? Find out in Mario's Restaurant Rookies. This is Babbo, New York's premier Italian eatery. I would like that guinea hand in my hand in 30 seconds. We make food that is something we think an Italian chef would make in this region. This is the owner, celebrity chef Mario Batali. Right here, we love his island sneakers and, and his blue thigh. It's kind of sometimes like being a rock star. It's kind of funny. For the first time ever, he will open his doors and give two young rookies their chance of a lifetime to learn from his team. Well, the kids come from a very good program called the CCAP, which is a scholarship program that gives full funding to culinary educations. They have one week to become professional chefs. A week? Yeah, I need a little more than a week. It's going to depend on their attitude. We're going to do the best we can to train them. Their task is to fool a team of experts by beating the Babo chefs at their own game. There'll be three critics, and we're going to give them three choices. And one of those will be made by my normal team, and the other two will be made by the rookies at every given moment along the way. Can Joe and Shanae compete with New York's finest chefs? I'll feel good if they do a good job, but it won't break my back if they don't. Have they got what it takes? Professional food is professional food, and the standards that we uphold are what they are. So they're going to try their darndest to get there, and uh, if it's a disaster, everyone will know. My name is Shanae McBean. I'm 18. I live in the Bronx. Anybody that comes here will feel at home. We don't treat anybody like strangers. This is the family. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Don't you want to eat? Hello? I don't think that I'll ever, right now, be as good as an executive chef. But in a couple of years, of course. For dessert, we have apple pie and key lime pie. Nobody in my house wants to cook anymore. It's like, if I don't cook, we're eating takeout. We have very big dinners in our family. We do nothing small. <laughs> Cooking means everything to me. There's probably nothing in this world that I like doing more. You should hear my mom on the phone talking to her friends. She's always bragging. She's an excellent chef. What do you think, Rudy? She's very confident. She looks good possibly the best thing that's ever happened to me. I know I'm good enough. Hey, how you doing, man? Just come right in, I'm hanging out in my room, huh? My name is Joseph Spatola. I just turned 19. I grew up in Astoria, Queens. This is my block. Spent my whole life here. I'm the leader of my group. I usually take leadership in what I do. Yeah, so, you know, I'm Spatola. That's why they picked me for the show. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? I got a phone book that's about this big. All in New York. I, I can call anybody, you know? So. Who is it? Who? I do a lot of different things. So no matter what I do, I'm always meeting new people. I'm always doing something to um, improve myself. I've been cooking for a long time. My family's in the food business. You have to want to cook. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna show everyone how well I work under pressure. Tossing a pizza isn't really that hard. Most of the pizzerias that everybody goes to, they lift up a pizza and the pizza just flops down and and you know oil is just dripping out of it. Am I right? Exactly. But when I make it, I make it crunchy. You tried it. What do you think? Pretty good, right? Shanae and Joe are traveling to Babo for the first of their four days of intensive chef training. The two kids that have been chosen, we don't really know that much about. We know that they've won some contests and hence the scholarships to go to cooking school, so they must have something going on. I am going to make this work. I am beyond determined. Definitely going to do this. But we're going to try to create a position where they feel 
like they're being relied on, and to a certain extent, introduce a couple of surprises at the end that should keep them at least rocking a little bit. Joseph? Sine? So, this is Bobo, and what you're going to do this week is work through four of the stations in the kitchen, and you're going to learn how to make three dishes each, one in pasta, one in grill or saute, and one in the pantry. On the moment of truth, we're going to serve a table of critics and see if they can tell how well you've done, and they're actually going to choose which dishes they like best. And it may be that you even make them better than the team. If I were you, I would take notes, especially on the dish that you're going to have, but have fun. You'll notice that even though we're working intensely, we're still having a good time because it's all about joy and light and truth. To see if they can do it in a week, it'll be interesting. I, I honestly don't know how much experience they already have. And it's hot back there. That's, that's another thing. And busy with the pressure, it'll all add up. So now it's kind of the calm before the storm. You have to get everything set up so when the time comes to move, you got to be ready. Now we're just waiting for the rush. Any minute now. Tables one, two, three. Up this bag, one and a half minutes. For the first day, they'll just kind of stand on a station, not really knowing what they're going to do. They're just going to kind of get a feel for the rhythm. I feel like I'm in their way. Step up. There's a tremendous amount of things going on right now. Now my uncle does so it's very simple. Learn you gotta move in this kitchen because if you don't, you're stuck. As soon as I find out what I'm gonna be making, I don't think I'll have a problem. But tomorrow's when we're gonna really explain to them what their three dishes are, how they're gonna make them, what are the really specific and most important details of those dishes, and how I think they can achieve it. How with them. I'm a little upset. Come up with something good for Mario, I'll impress him. He's a dead man. It's day two of rookies Joe and Shanae's challenge to fool the team of food critics. I've never done anything like this before. They're attentive, they're sharp, they're bright, they got their eyes open, they know what they're doing. This is a big step up. I'm not worried about it. I've been practicing. Soon enough, we'll introduce a little bit of doubt. The students have just graduated from a Careers Through Culinary Arts program, an organization which awards scholarships and jobs to up-and-coming chefs. They uh, obviously did well. Cap, cook off. What did you kick ass on? I kicked ass on the speed. So you were fastest, but your food was also technically great. Joe was confident. As soon as I find out what I'm going to be making, I'll take off the problem. Last night, he said he could definitely make a dish. And he could have made it last night, the first time. <laughs> they loved my technique, my confidence, my speed. Watching her last night, I didn't get the feeling she was as confident as Joe was. Joe stood very much like a warrior and Sinead stood more like a student. Overall, I had I would have to say that I had a pretty good night. We're coming into their territory and trying, you know, trying to do or be as good as they are. The hardest part about this job is, <clears throat> is learning how to make this dish then this much time. And I understand that it's a little difficult for them to take us seriously. It can't be that hard, you know? I think it was pretty easy. Everybody always says that, you know, I only look at the negative aspect of everything and I don't see the positive. Well, negative is constantly around me, so you know, it's kind of hard to not focus on it when it's in your face all the time. I'm just not sure what time I have to meet everybody tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's 8 o'clock, because on the paper it says 8 o'clock. Well, I wake up early, huh? With just three days left to master their three courses, Joe and Shanae also have to showcase their talents by creating their own special dish to be served to the judges. Mario is taking them shopping for ingredients. Well, we've got a busy day. We love to hit the market, especially on Mondays and Saturdays. The eggplant looks nice. Which one do you like? You like that purple one? Yeah. And what makes great Italian cooking so good when it's really done well is that it really has the flavor of the region. 
And what the green market brings to us is this incredible bounty of great farmers where you get the flavor of the Hudson Valley. How about some radishes? These ones? Yes, those ones. Beautiful. We'll go to the market early and uh, pick up some ingredients for some specials that I'd like them to kind of conceptualize and then perhaps as an added gift to the critics on the last day. We're going to let them drive it by what they shop for at the market. As long as they don't burn everything, it's probably going to work out all right. Unfortunately, we have a little problem in that Joe has misunderstood the intensity of his responsibilities. He's an hour and 20 minutes late with no sign of, of showing up. I don't know. Maybe he's sleeping in? Unacceptable. It's a little disappointing because he's my partner in crime, so he should be here. He's not. So I'm a little upset. He's a dead man. Hell with him. I'll let him shop by himself. It's almost two hours late. And you? What the hell happened? I'm caught up in traffic. They have these things called subways that go underground. They're faster than anything. She's going to do a vegetarian appetizer with some uh, plums, edamame, red amaranth. If you want to, as we're walking over that way, kind of scope things out, right. then you can come back here later on when we have, when you have a little time. And uh, we're working on ours. I'll come up with something. I'll come up with something good for Mario. I'll impress him. I got a whole bunch of cookbooks. I know a whole bunch of uh, good chefs, too. I would say uh, Mario's more on her side now than mine. Probably make a, a real good appetizer. We don't really make recipes that you'd recognize from any of your favorite restaurants in Italy. We make food that an Italian cook would make in this region. That is to say, we use mostly local products. When you talk to an Italian about what is the best place to eat, they would never really ever say a restaurant. They would always say their aunt's house or their mom's house or their grandpa's house. And that's because what an Italian really wants to eat is something that smells a bit like the rain as it falls in the afternoon for the first time in the day wherever you were born. And that's kind of what we try to emulate. At Babo, Mario is revealing the three dishes the students have to cook for the critics. We will taste the food that they're actually going to be given to prepare so they understand what the dishes are and what we expect them to look like and taste like. These are your three, and these are your three. Mario has chosen for Chenet beet salad, spaghetti alla catara, and the lamb chops. For Joe, the lamb's tongue salad, linguine with clams, and crispy sweetbreads. Food's excellent. It's excellent. I like the street bread. It's nice and crispy. The lamb is really good. I never really tried lamb's tongue, but so far I like it. Now that I know what we have to make, I know what I have to do, and I'm going to get it done. I don't think they're hard to cook. The students are rushed into the kitchen to learn how to cook their dishes. We'll taste everything tonight as you're describing it and learning about it. Then when you're executing your dish for the critics, when it finally comes down to the big moment, you're going to be able to taste those things and know if there's a variation and even say, hey, maybe I'll adjust my seasoning here. I'm tasting a whole bunch of portions of a whole bunch of different dishes. Tonight, Joe is preparing his main course. Today, we're cooking sweet breads. We're putting them in uh, with flour that also has ground fennel seed in it. So we put these in here because you're pretty much going to be deep frying them almost. Put our sweet breads in now. These will take probably four, four or five minutes. Take a scallion, put a little bit of oil in here, two types of onions, some duck bacon. I haven't tried anything yet. I'm still observing. Have a little bit of parsley oil, make sure you shake it before you put it on the plate. This is the membrillo, which is quince based orange juice, cherry vinegar, and your remolata. That's the dish. Finished. Works very organized. Glad to learn from him. Worst case scenario, we could lose a win. Yes! I heard you had a little crash last night.
Joe and Shanae are training to be professional chefs. Their task is to fool the experts. On the second day, they're actually going to know their dishes, so it's going to be very interesting to see how closely they're watching what it is. That's going to be their big challenge. They are halfway through their second day of training at Bamos. We're lucky to be very popular. Italian food is something that people like to eat a lot. The chefs are always moving. They never stop and sit down and take a break from like 5 o'clock until the end of the night. It's just boom, boom, boom. They get slammed with orders. It's nonstop action. If you'll notice, there's no screaming in the kitchen. There's really a lot less testosterone in our kitchen. Working with many chefs in Europe, that's how you train. You're tense, you're screaming, you're yelling, you're angry. And in my opinion, it's the, you know, the child who's beaten as they grow up, grow up to beat their kids is what it seems like to me. The staff at Bobo is very tight-knit, and they work together very well, and they seem to complement each other. We're calm, cool professionals doing what we like very quickly and not yelling about it. Five grand to sell. Tell Nancy. You want to put a lamp out like this? Both students have to master their main courses by the end of their shift. See that? That's still rare. Joe has already been shown his crispy sweetbreads. Chinay is on lamb chops. It doesn't, it doesn't give or anything. Flavor is what is the whole thing that most people forget that it's really the minuscule variation at the very last minute that's going to make something taste that much better. And that you constantly attend to that detail is what makes a really good restaurant good. OK, so here's a lamb you call. All right, come over here. Your garnish for the lamb. Now, Jerusalem artichokes, shiitake mushrooms, and make a nice tiki. Okay. It's like construction. You just put something together, it's the same way every time. There's variation in the sweetness of the bean, the acidity of a lemon. You have to evaluate that every second while you're cooking. That's what makes good cooks. And they're right there. A little lemon zest and mint. With only three days to go and three dishes to learn, the pressure is on to remember everything about each course. And I don't want to fluster them, but I do want to give them a feel for the urgency that happens in the kitchen every day. And uh, I, he's worked in the kitchen, so he knows what it's like to be a little bit behind. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts, knowing that it's all in the line. First, what you do is you dredge the sweet bread in, in a fennel, fennel wonder flour. When you press it in, it, it's like it goes, it sinks in, it's still warm. And if you push it in, it just springs back real fast. It's cooked all the way. You add sca a scallion and a shark. I forgot the name of it. It gets a little resistant. It's medium. Take one scallion. For my first time, I got it medium rare. I'm forgetting what this is, but it's like a jam. It's really sweet. It's good. Yes! I'm off the old Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. Welcome to the camera off! Feels a bit, bit flexy over there. All I do is put this down, man. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. You guys set me up. That's a big mess. I have no idea how it happened. The whole thing collapsed. And what happened was all the tomato sauce went all the way down, all over everything, inside the refrigerator. You know, it was embarrassing. You, know, you want to make a good impression, but... This is how you cook it. I don't like standing there watching. I get... I don't know, I get bored, you know? I feel like a Mama Lou, like a Bob Lou. It's day three of training and time is running out. Mario has started the training day early after last night's disaster. I think you had a little crash last night. <laughs> My first feeling watching Joe in the kitchen last night is that if he's going to make errors, it's maybe going to be in cooking the sweetbreads. It's maybe going to be in just taste things. And then. You can start to taste what the pig ate last night. He was definitely going to teach me how to make a good brick oven pizza, not realizing that uh, in my youth I was the world's fastest pizza man and the best of all time. Yeah, I think I can show Mario how to make a good pizza. I look forward to learning from the master Joe. I can't taste what the pig ate. It has sort of like a woodsy taste to it. Wood. Yeah. Sinead's, uh calm, uh, cool, uh, not overconfident. She's more cautiously approaching uh, Judgment Day. Today I'm doing salads. I beet salad. Beet salad, yeah. Today she seems interesting. She, uh, she's she got a nice attitude. They're young, so they need to mature a little bit. they got to realize, is, is this what they want to do for the rest of their life? Because if you don't love it to the fullest, it's, it's going to drive you crazy. I think she, she'll be better than Joe. I, 
I don't think Joe wants to cook. I think Joe wants to be a manager. You know, you gotta work with your way up to be a manager. And I think Sinead realizes that. Joey's doing the pasta. And then tomorrow we'll switch. <laughs> that Joey again. <laughs> he probably dropped something else. He was saying that at one restaurant he worked at, as a food runner, he made more than the chefs. So there's one thing you never tell a chef is how much the waiters make. Start sorting out all the good pieces of basil. With only two days left, there's another problem. The students can only practice their dish if the customer orders it. Nobody orders a linguine with clams yet. So I can't make it until somebody orders linguine with clams. She's made her dishes more times than I've made mine. so. That puts me under more pressure, but I'll be able to work with that pressure. Every time I look over there, she's making the salad. And I'm just standing here, you know? My first beef salad came out perfect. Let's do it. It's the end of the night, and no one has ordered Joe's linguine with clams. Sous chef Memo takes pity on him and shows him how it's done. In order, to start with salad, red onions, onions and chestnut, uh, and garlic. Right. Yeah. But wait, you add the clams and what at the same time? Right one. A little bit more. Got it. One more ingredient you're missing. Oh, the red pepper flake. You want to get your linguine? The pasta never waits for the sauce. And when the pasta's ready, it's time to go. When it's finally done, you take it out and drain all the water. Hold on, pull out. And then you're ready to play. I think you got a little humbled seeing how busy the station was today. I think you kind of scared them. <laughs> That's good. If they think that they can do it, then they probably can. If they think that they can't do it, or maybe can't, then they'll probably do really well. But if they come in thinking, hey, I know this, they're going to crash and burn. But so far, I've only seen my dish twice. I don't really need to take notes. Janae didn't really seem to have that snap. Reduced fruit juice on mozzarella is not flying out of this kitchen. This is Babo. There's a lot of the food in there. I have no idea what it is. It's my first time seeing any of this stuff. I'm going to turn vegetarian after this week. It's like, hmm, try this. It's, it's goose brain. Mm, it's good for you. In the village, everybody likes that kind of stuff. Wow. It's like, weird. yeah, all weird stuff. Kitchen rookies Joe and Shanae are being taught by Mario's team of professional chefs. Well, I'd like to get them up to speed as much as I can. I don't think that anyone would judge me on not training someone properly in four days, so it's really their cross to bear. They only have one day's training left before they have to fool a team of food critics. The most important thing he's going to have to do is uh, remember to put everything in the dish. Last night, Joe was cooking pasta. But so far, I've only seen my dish twice. I've seen the linguine with clams once. We chose I dishes that no one is making. Yeah, you should tell the waiters to sell it. Well, I'll, I'll tell them. Yeah. Huh? Sell the linguine, this way I can see it more. This way when the big day comes. I so you only saw it once? I saw it once. That was the first time ever Put the I pressure on, it. huh? Shanae was cooking salad. Beet salad? Yeah. yeah. Got a figure? Okay. With two courses done, Joe and Shanae have only one day left to learn their last course and create their own. Tonight I'm gonna make a couple phone calls. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna make. All right. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Special, special. That's the first thing we talked about. All right. Ready, guys? All right. So now you've got to get your station up with the pasta today. You're working on that spaghetti a la guitarra, and you're working on the warm lamb tongue salad. Are you feeling all right about the dishes? I just have to work out a special. That's about it. With your mozzarella there. With my mozzarella. Your uncle's Latino. Yes, sir. I want to make a sweet type of sauce, maybe a reduction of something, some type of fruit juices. Um, 
I'm gonna, we're gonna work it out. We're not gonna present them to the critics as a Bobo dish. We're gonna say these are two dishes made by our two guys, our sea camp folks. And, and you know, they're gonna be as honest as I would expect them to be on any other day. Put that rough part, oh, don't eat them. Right, you can't please everybody. Let's go to work. These guys are green. They're pretending not to be green, though. I like that. It's just a little confidence. Reduced fruit juice on mozzarella is not flying out of this kitchen. I <laughs> get that thought. It's pretty funny. Right there, Memo? Do a little fruit juice reduction with the uh, mozzarella on Sunday night special. Is that what it is? I'm not sure. He's still conceptualizing it, I think. They don't have a lot of fruit juices in the house for reducers. <laughs> As we go along all week, we're going to tell them the salient points of the dish. What makes it good, what, what would make it wrong. So we're going to arm them properly for their final test. The students can only see their dishes being made when they are ordered. This is your pasta, right? That's your guitarra. Since you won't be using a timer, it's really important that you keep tasting your pasta. And then another thing is that you want to try and finish the pasta in the pan. It's up to Joe and Shanae to take the initiative and demand to cook their dishes. We're going to work out the lamb's tongue cells. And I'm just going to keep on watching it over and over and over until I, until I memorize it. This is the botarga, right? This is, it's the egg sack of the morning, right? You made that face. I don't like it. They don't really seem very excited about the kitchen that they're in, and they don't really seem to want to be around, or they don't really want to jump into what's going on. Your towel, your pan, your show. Shanae has been allowed to prepare her pasta a la catada. You want to take your tomatoes? What? Go ahead and add them in there, yeah. The, probably one of the hottest chilies on earth. At this point, what you want to do is you want to add water to it. Pasta water. I'm waiting for my pasta to boil. My sauce is pretty much there. And um, once the pasta is cooked, we're going to toss it up in the sauce and then plate it. I don't know if they're scared or if they're just overconfident. You just want to season this nicely. While Shanae is busily cooking her linguine, Joe is still observing. And then we're going to take an egg that's been lightly poached. Oh, that's a three and they are looking at this food and they're going like, okay, lettuce, cheese, you know, olive oil and vinegar. You know, there's an art to making like very simple food look beautiful. And I just don't know if that went right over their heads or if they just thought, okay, yeah, check, 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 you know, a little checklist in their mind about what they're going to put down. This is the first time I've made it. I'm really excited. So I love it. First time's a charm. Have the chef taste it, he knows. Perfect. It is. Yeah. God, that's good. Thank you. My first dish of guava. A plus. Personally, when I look to hire somebody who's going to work for me, I look for snap. Shanae didn't really seem to have that snap. It'll work out. It always does. And if it doesn't, hey. You're all the pizza. No big deal. <laughs> I see her standing there with her gaze kind of fixed and glazed, and she doesn't really seem to be processing. She seems kind of bored. And this is cacio de Roma. Cacio. This is sweet nuts cheese. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep on watching it over and over and over until I, until I memorize it. This way, the night of the competition, I'll be ready. When people come to work at Bobo, they get a clipboard and they write everything down. And I haven't seen anybody write anything down yet, so... I don't really need to take notes. Most of the things I can remember. The next order we get, They haven't cooked anything yet. That concerns me. That concerns me. I, I saw Shanae shaking a saute pan today a little bit, so that's a good start, but... So I'm getting tired standing for the rest of the night, no one ordered the lamb's tongue salad. That means it's the last night of training and Joe still hasn't cooked any dishes himself. So you saw it, but you didn't make it? No, I'm going make it. The menu Mario selected has proved to be an unpopular choice for the diners, giving the students little chance to practice their dishes for the judges. Oh, I made the, um, chiara. We still got that dish now. Yeah. I didn't even make my dish. I saw it three times and that's it. It's funny, everything that we assigned them to do, no one ordered. Uh, so it's kind of weird. Through repetition, are they going to be able to just see it over and over again and do a perfect job? No, but I think they're smart enough they can actually see what the dish is. And she looks like she's going to do well. I mean, I, I think they'll both do well. It'll be interesting to see how uh, how the pressure gets. It won't be a problem. I didn't make the beef salad. I 
I think I made about one, so we can do it. It's not a big deal. We'll get it done. Bye-bye. Use frozen mozzarella. Can't find it, so. I think they'll probably get 50%, they'll, they'll fool them, and the other half, they're gonna go, uh-oh. Rock, rock. Inedible. It's the final day, and students Joe and Shanae have had four days training with professional chefs. It's not like I'm gonna climb Mount Everest. <laughs> I'm just going to cook, you know? It's no big deal, so I'm ready. Their difficult task is to cook a three-course meal and a specially prepared dish. Have they learned enough to fool the food critics into believing the food is prepared by Mario's team of chefs? Today is a big day when I have to prepare these dishes that I've learned over the week, so all the pressure comes down to this moment, tonight, 7 o'clock. I'm doing one special, and I'm still unprepared with that, but I'm going to create something tonight. Joe hopes to impress the judges with a bag of mozzarella that he got from his uncle's restaurant. I think what's going to be the tiebreaker is their special food. use frozen mozzarella. This is fresh, so I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to turn Prosciutto and mozzarella, you can't go wrong. My special is a vegetarian salad. Hopefully it'll be good and everybody will like it. And it'll become one of Mario's signature dishes, you know. Hopefully I'll really nail it today, so. Hopefully the judges will like my food. If they don't, too bad. Right now I'd like to be better than Shanae. It's, it's healthy competition. You guys ready? Yes, ready. Good. Go cook. Despite their confidence, Joe and Shanae have asked Mario if they can cook their dishes before the critics arrive. We'll see. The staff is not going to be able to help them. I mean, the, the staff is just going to watch silently while they make their bed to sleep in. For the first course, Shanae is cooking beet salad. Joe, the lamb's tongue salad. Around the poached egg. I just finished it with parsley oil. Good. Black pepper around the rim. Put the dish here and wait for one of the waiters to come pick it up. They're not bringing them out? They're they take you out? out? Take them back and bring them bring them out. Slap them when you get back there. With Sinead's salad coming out on top, she turns her hand to her second course, pasta alla catara. Joe's is linguine with clams. Prepare for my pasta to boil. Could have put the pasta in there earlier. It's a seven minute cook. It's been 18 minutes. On this side, the boil is more vigorous. So that means it eats the pasta faster. I have my pasta on this side, so it's taking a little bit longer. I'm going to tell him something, but I'm, only if it's a heinous error. Other than that, we're just going to assess how comfortable we feel with them presenting the dishes. In the end, I can't let them send up utter crap because it will stain us as well a little bit. So we don't want to be stained at all. That's it. I think Mara's going to be impressed. I think I got it pretty much down. Sounds good. Are you putting any chilies in? No. I'm gonna deep fry the sweet bread. We have sweet breads here at room temperature. Well, he's got the white wine, he's got the butter, he's got the French cheddar, he's got everything in there except the chili. Then still a little under. Do you detect any bacarga on there at all? No bacarga. Zero? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Is that it? No, no, that's the chili. Are you sure? It's, bread crumbs, it's all yeah. bread crumbs, right? Uh -huh. Not a bacarga. Not a bacarga. <laughs> all right. <coughs> no bacarga. 
You know that your sweet breads are ready when uh, there's a nice golden color. He nailed the noodle right. He nailed everything right except for the chilies. She overcooked the noodle a little bit and forgot the main bread. Right. Sorry. C minus. B plus. So, with Joe's linguine with clams a clear winner, will they master their last and most difficult course? Raw, raw, and then don't even need it. They forgot the membrio, which is the little vinaigrette that goes over the top. Cold. Sunchokes aren't even cooked. The whole idea behind cooking is that you have to transfer the heat from the fire to the ingredients, and we've skipped that step in this particular dish. C plus on both occasions. They're not gonna fool the judges with raw food at all. <laughs> I'm confident I can do that, Jason. I'd say that I, pretty, I did a pretty good job for making it, for never, for never ever making it, you know, once. I did a good job making it. I'm a little antsy, but not as nervous. So now make me a, uh, one of each of those specials, and then we're going to taste those. But we'll taste them right back here, so I'll be back in the kitchen. Joe is making his special, and I'm still searching for my ingredients that are temporarily displaced. They were in the refrigerator, and they disappeared, so. Shanae can't find her ingredients. I have never seen them. <laughs> in the real world of the restaurant business, when you put something away, have you, have you noticed how we mark everything in there? I thought for sure you marked it and just said special or something. But it's all right. So you don't have a special? No problem. It's a classic. I, um, I don't really have a presentation. You know. Joe's is like a classic Italian restaurant dish. All good, you know, not with anything we would do, but she bought the right groceries, but forgot to uh, watch out for them. Yeah, I think he can do it. This needs more sauce and more flavor. The ragging on my dish, so I don't like it, I'm sorry. Final night, and Joe and Shanae have only four days to become professional chefs. The appetizers they're probably going to nail, the pastas were close, and the main courses were very nearly a disaster. It's a disaster. Can they improve in time to beat the Babo chefs at their own game and fool a team of food critics? Barbara Fairchild, I'm the editor in chief of Bon Appetit magazine. Uh, hopefully, they'll get, you know, two out of three dishes right. They pass an act. Chef partner of the Hesco restaurant. I'm Sheila Lukens, food editor of Parade Magazine. No way. These judges have got their knives sharpened and are ready for a sacrificial lamb. We're gonna give the critics full open throttle to say whatever they want. With very little preparation and their confidence drained, can the rookies trick the judges into believing they're professional chefs? Okay, cheers. See how rhubarb doesn't open. Oh, this is a very nice occasion. Very nice. I had to get my special ready. It's still in the fridge. It's a defrosting. Joe's mozzarella has defrosted so we can prepare it for the judge's table. Shanae has lost her special and has to wait. Will Joe's special give him the advantage? Wow. Thank you. Alex's love, he's got to work. It's a special. <laughs> They're ragging on my dish, so told me to make it, so I made it. Should have told me not to make it. Which is fresh mozzarella with tomato paste. Okay, now we had a pork sheet in San Antonio. Is this the special one that he made? It is the special one. All right, guys, let's go to work. One lamb stung, one beet salad, one heart to palm for the home team. The cook-off has begun, and the students are on their own. It's the first course with Joe's lamb's tongue and Shanae's beet salad up against the restaurant's hearts of palm. Will the food critics be able to spot the rookie's food? 
came out good. I didn't forget any steps. This is very lovely looking. I'm a little curious about this three minute egg, if it's really three up. It looks like it's very nicely cooked. Joe and Shanae are on their second course and are competing against pasta chef Tony. So far, the beets are cooked perfectly. The cheese looks like it was almost added as a last minute thought. The salt and the pepper would have kept it over. those lamb's tongues? Or is that the red herring? Joe and Shanae's dishes are up against the restaurant's squid ink pasta with crab meat. Oh, nice. And now to the last and most important course, where the students are up against Babo Chef Frank, who is cooking pancetta arabiana. Just gonna do what I do every day, so I know it's gonna be better. This is really good. This needs more sauce and more flavor. Mm -hmm. It's almost over. That was good. Though. This is very good. This is quite spectacular, I think. This goes to the guy. This goes to the woman in green. This goes to the woman in red. These are the sweetbreads. And you have the other pancetta. I wonder how my <laughs> my appetizer would have tasted. Get your nerves going. The judges have made their final decisions. It's time to reveal who came out on top and if Joe and Janae have beaten the professionals at their own game. Very good to me. So, let's recap the meal. The mozzarella. Is that good? Okay. It was overdressed. Tomatoes were a little bit underripe. Beet salad was beautiful and very nicely presented. Uh, I thought that it was a little flat tasting. Heart of Palm was brilliant. And the lamb's tongue? Uh, the cheese seemed like an afterthought. But which one was the Babo Chef dish, well, we in your opinion? Well, felt that it was the Hearts of Palm. Hearts of Palm. The Babo Chefs came out on top for the first course, with Shanae's second. Now, onto the pastas. The lean with clam, the garlic wasn't cooked enough. Although the clams were very nicely cooked. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Clam. And the macaroni nice alla chitarra? Uh, that was overwhelming with the chili. And we really couldn't taste a lot of other ingredients. Well, we thought it was the black uh, in the pasta. The black and green and white. And again, Yet again, they guessed the babo dish, with Joe in second place. And then, let's uh, talk about the lamb chops. Were they seasoned? Were they cooked properly? A little overcooked, little I think, over. for everybody's taste. A little dried. The sweet bread, they were crisp. They were. Didn't you think? Yeah, yeah they were definitely crisp. And we really gave it a, a strong a number two. And the pancetta di pieno? It was fantastic. Yeah, we loved again, it. Again, he couldn't we stop eating it. it. it was sort of yeah. like, I yank it, it out of his Again, the babo dish just beats Joe's crispy sweet breads. This means the food critics guessed all three courses correctly. I mean, this is a nitpicky crowd. I mean, and they've been told well, to be we, nitpicky, we were, so... We were nitpicky. Had they been out to dinner on a regular basis, <laughs> they might have thought everything was just Every, fine, everything right? Everything was very tasty. Everything I think that they uh, shouldn't be as disheartened as they looked. I mean, it was a, a sad set. They didn't look that ecstatic about it at the end of the day. Pressure came in, but never too much, right? It was well, you know, we could have slipped up. We might have made a mistake, and then they might have been able to surge ahead. Well, his dishes definitely are better. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think now more than ever, I want to work in a kitchen more. So, hasn't turned me away at all. No matter what, I'm going to walk away with this by gaining something. I'm not going to walk away a loser because I learned something greater than on my normal day.